Well, everybody's talking about last week's big news, AEW heading to Wembley Stadium in London, England. The first show over in the UK, the first stadium show in the UK since SummerSlam 1993. And everybody's talking about it, how big of a deal this is for AEW, for the wrestling business as a whole. And, of course, there's lots of trolls out there as well who are balking and scoffing at this. Ah, they'll never fit more than 10,000, 20,000 people in that building. It'll be a big joke. They'll get laughed out of the U.K. WWE doesn't even do those kind of numbers over there. What are they thinking? Well, they're absolutely going to do it. It's their first time over there. Now, are they going to sell 90,000? No. Uh, But they can certainly hit... 50,000, 60,000, 70,000. But it's not just because it's their first time over in the UK. It's not just because they have so many stars that people haven't seen in the UK. CM Punk, MJF, Chris Jericho hasn't been over there in a while. Well, he did like an inside the ropes fucking gimmick there or whatever. But you get the point. Not only that. But the matches that you can put together for this fucking show, oh, man. You could do, if you really, really wanted to book a super card and just fill this fucking thing out, there are some huge marquee matches you can do. And a lot of people are talking about it. A lot of people are speculating on it. So let's go ahead and check out a couple of these clips now, and then we'll talk on the back end about... What are some of the matches that we can put together for this thing? Uh, First clip here I want to play is from the Hall of Fame podcast with Booker T and Brad Gilmore. And they're sitting around speculating on a couple of different matches or stars that could make this event special. Check out these clips. Wembley, that's a big stadium, so they're going to need some some, some firepower to take into Wembley Stadium and really, really pull that thing. I think there's a few things that you can do um, and there are a few matches that maybe you can use to draw that crowd. Um, And you got to, and this is no knock to like any of the, um, I don't know, kind of the guys coming up in AEW, but to me, that's the card where you have heavy, heavy name influence. Like every, every top name you got, has got to be on that card. It is an all hands on deck, all names approach. You got to put as many recognizable names the worldwide on that show to draw 50,000 people. That's why people are going to call me crazy. You might call me crazy after I say this. That's why I think I'm making a prediction that a recent uh, free agent on the market might make his AEW debut at Wembley. And I think it might be Bill Goldberg. I'm telling you, get, get Goldberg to go in there against whoever... As an, as an attraction. That wouldn't be an attraction for Wembley Stadium. When's the last time Goldberg wrestled in London or Wembley, look, wherever look, Wembley is? Look, I like the it. UK. Look, I'm not opposed to it. I'm not Tony Khan it. says he's got his eye on Goldberg. Should Sting, could, could this be a draw for Sting's last match to be at Wembley Stadium? Because I don't think if AEW does draw this crowd, they're thinking he will be wrestling in front of a larger crowd or a more historic venue for the remainder of his run in AEW retiring at Wembley in front of 50,000 could be pretty cool. But they weren't the only ones fantasy book in this show as Dax Harwood made the news this week as well. When on his podcast FTR with Dax Harwood, he did a little fantasy booking of his own. And he fantasy booked one of, if not the main event for this show. Check out this clip. Uh, booking this um, all in, maybe for yourself or and just in particular, how to get people interested in this show to get the amount of people that are needed to fill the stadium. So I, you know, I've said it before. I think that if we want to get 40,000, 50,000 tickets, it's the match we want to put on the match that everyone wants to see uh, as far as an AEW goes. And I think it's, uh, you know, CM Punk and FTR versus the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega. Wow. That's what I think. Wow. Um, and then I, you know, 
I feel that the following week at all out separate those matches. That's, that's me fantasy booking in my dream. Um, I've, I've been on board to um, have match three with the young bucks for forever. I, I think uh, right now is the perfect opportunity to have those two matches, those, excuse me, three matches. I just named the six man and the two individual matches because of the changes that are going on with the WWE. Um, we have the opportunity coming off of WrestleMania to build AEW and show people how good AEW is. And totally always said it that um, whenever business, if, if, if they were trying to get a boost in business back in Crockett days, or when he was with his dad at South Southeastern, uh, they would always put the best versus the best. And I feel that's what AEW needs to do right now is put the best versus the best. Um, or I'm not even saying the best wrestler. I'm saying the, the, the best matchups against each other. And I think capitalizing off of um, controversy. What, yeah. yeah, controversy and what the six man could be. That's what I feel. And then also, if you did the six man in the UK, right? Uh, and then you did the two individual matches in the United States the next week. No, no market feels cheated. You know what I mean? Right. right. So that's that's my opinion. Absolutely. So here's what you do. You do the Young Bucks against FTR. That's the match that I would do over in Wembley. I would do it for the tag team titles that FTR still currently holds. Who wins? Doesn't matter. Maybe the Young Bucks win, and then uh, they drop them at All Out, as uh, supposedly the All Out show is still happening. So that could be a thing. I don't do the six-man tag here, and here's why. Because I think Kenny Omega versus Will Ospreay is the match that you want to do in England. You could do Kenny against Punk. You really, really could, and I'd be fine with that. Or you do the six man, the young buck, you know, the elite young bucks and Kenny Omega versus CMFTR. Also great options. But I think you want to have Will Ospreay on this show, both because he is a hometown favorite and uh, that's going to, you know, pop the locals. You know, one of the big things about Wembley and SummerSlam 93 was the British Bulldog was from there. You don't think they're going to want to get behind some of their own people? You got Will Ospreay there. Let's get him in the mix. So I think the rematch with him and Kenny Omega is the way to go. Unless they're going to do that at like Forbidden Door or something, then you can absolutely jump to the six man. That would be the way to go. And that's assuming that uh, the Young Bucks want to work with FTR or CM Punk or anything like that. But I, here's what I would do. Me personally, Young Bucks, I, I, I would even do maybe you do CM Punk and FTR versus the Elite at All Out. Uh, you could do it at Wembley or All Out. Really doesn't matter. But uh, for my booking here, we do that so that we can do Kenny Omega versus Will Ospreay uh, and do that on this Wembley show. And then you take a CM Punk and you put him in his main event title match against MJF. You get that one out of your way and you do it in Wembley. CM Punk comes back in June. To the build up to the, the title match against MJF at Wembley. Maybe Punk wins it and then drops it back to MJF at All Out. Who knows? Eh, I'm not here to book All Out. Um, another thing you want to do, absolutely, as Brad Gilmore mentioned, you want to do Sting's last match. That's a layup. It's already been said that Sting's basically said he wants to retire this year. He's done. And he even laid the groundwork in his promo. Uh, against MJF on Dynamite. You know, the Stingers showtime is coming to an end soon. Sting's last match. Now, if Punk ends up being tied up with the Elite, then I think, you know, if MJF uh, is free, then maybe Sting gets a title shot against MJF. Um, but, you know, for my book in here, what I'm leaning towards is we're going to do... Uh, Sting against Darby. I believe Sting had said he would like his last match to be against Darby. You know, it doesn't mean they got to have a feud or a breakup or anything. Just have his last, it's announced as his last match. Win, lose, or draw, Sting's last match is happening in Wembley. 
Don't do if I lose, I retire. Just announce it as Sting's last match. That's a draw. People want to go to Wembley Stadiums to see still never, ever, 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 ever see Sting wrestle again. This is your absolute last time to see him. Sting's last match. That's a layup against Darby Allen. Punk against MJF. FTR versus The Elite. Kenny Omega versus Will Ospreay. You do bring Goldberg in for one shot. Absolutely, I agree with that as well. Why? Because he's available. Two, because you got to fucking, you want to sell tickets. Sell the tickets. I wouldn't sign him to any kind of long contract with AEW. I might even just make it a one-match, one-time deal, one appearance. Um, I kind of liked, what did Booker say, put him against QT Marshall or something like that? You just get Goldberg in there to just jackhammer spear one, two, three. So you don't want to put him in there against anybody that he's going to hurt, right? And uh, I mean, I guess physically, technically, but I mean, just, you know, their win loss record or whatever. Somebody that they can job out. You know, you don't want to necessarily waste a space of QT Marshall on the big show, but it's going to be a quick one. And, you know, look, he does a lot of work backstage. There's a little reward ski for him. Get him on the show. Uh, is what I would do. Uh, I, I really do like that. And then as far as the rest of the card, just fill it out with uh, some of your other top draws, you know, your other top matches. The Acclaim's got to be on that card somewhere. Um, the Orange Cassidy's got to be in there. The House of Black's got to be in there. Lots of different. Uh, Chris Jericho's got to be on that card. What do you do with Chris Jericho? Lots of cool shit that you can do over in the UK. So I, I think it's a slam dunk. I really do. I think they can pull out all the stops. Call in favors. Oh, you also bring in Mercedes Monet. I didn't hear anybody else talk about that. Bring in Mercedes to face either you square off against Britt Baker and you put the uh, IWGP women's title on the line. And if all parties are cool with it, it would be fun to maybe drop the title. To Britt Baker in Wembley and then have her win it back at All Out. You see, I keep saying that. I don't want to do that for every storyline, but I think that's something you can absolutely do. The old Tuesday in Texas gimmick, right? Where Survivor Series, The Undertaker beat Hulk Hogan for the world title, but then just dropped it a couple days later at a Tuesday in Texas pay-per-view to Hulk Hogan. So uh, you either do that with Britt or... You do the reverse uh, with uh, um, Jamie Hayter, and you have Hayter go in, and you have her fucking drop the AEW women's title to Mercedes, and then Mercedes drops it right back to Hayter on All Out. I think that would be a good one to do. Either or would be fine. It'd be a huge spotlight for Jamie Hayter, who's from the UK, so that might be the better way to go, but ultimately, Britt Baker is your biggest female star, so... You can't go wrong with pairing her up with Britt Baker either. You know, Soraya, get her on the show somewhere in there. Lots of great shit you can do. So to tell me that you can't fit 50,000 people, if you do all of that and you don't get 50,000 people at least, you're fucking suck, man. I I think anybody could put that card together and draw 50,000 in Wembley. But... It will remain to be seen. CM Punk returning. Lots of big, big, big things to do over there. So uh, you get like Brian Danielson to work with fucking Zack Sabre Jr. Maybe, you know, you bring in people from other companies. You got uh, still got Switchblade Jay White that you can fit on the card. It's going to be huge, but I could just keep going, you know, naming off great names that would help sell this show. But I think I hit all the highlights for you that you need to hear that I think will sell this show. But that's just my opinion. Am I wrong? You still think that they can't do 50,000 with that kind of a card? You're insane, first of all. But if you do think that and you have your reasons why, let me know down in the comments below. And I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next. Oh yeah, thanks for checking out the video, yeah. Don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to like it if you liked it, yeah. And you can check out full episodes each and every Sunday right here on the channel. Oh yeah, dig it!